Hello, uber-confused students. Um, hopefully this will be a, a summary to accompany those silly vectors I was trying to make in that graph somewhat inefficiently. So we'll start off again by writing our two di differential equations for growth of predator and prey. So the prey growth, dh dt, is given by the normal exponential growth factor minus this feedback term, which is related to how many prey are consumed by predators. So that's P H P. The predator relation, DP DT, is dependent on the normal exponential decline of predators as defined by the mortality rate M, uh, plus their growth rate, which is fueled by eating prey, that's AP. HP. Now, I may not have emphasized enough in class, but notice that these two terms appear in both the prey and the predator growth rates. So these differential equations are coupled to one another. In that case, we identify regimes. DHDT can be greater than zero, growth of prey, or it can be less than zero, prey declines. DPDT can be greater than zero, predators grow, or less than zero, predators decline. Those things mark out those four quad quadrants, I don't know what a quadrant is, quadrants in the H versus P diagram. But I'm not even going to do the diagram, let's just think logically about this. So we begin in the growth phase where DHDT is greater than zero, positive growth, which means that this term has to be numerically bigger than the second term. It's a big number minus a small number, still a positive number. So H continues to grow. So DHDT is positive. The prey are going to continue to grow. Their number is going to increase. Now, if you go down to the dBdt equation, the growth of predators, you see that H is involved. So there's going to come a time, if we just let H grow, that suddenly this term is greater than that term, and dPdt is greater than zero, so the predators start to grow. Now, if we go back to these initial conditions, or these conditions up here, Remember, this is in a phase where big P is declining. So if big P is declining, predator density is declining, then this becomes a small number, which lets this dominate that and be positive. But then as the H continues to grow, we're going to cross this threshold where then suddenly dP dt is greater than zero. That will happen while H is continuing to grow, and so this is then where we get the negative feedback in this term on this growth equation. When we're in a situation where P is now growing because this threshold has been reached, and H is still growing for a little while, the product of H times P is becoming very large, and this term then is getting bigger and bigger, and eventually will dominate that term and then that will lead to dH dt less than zero. So that's the reason that the prey grows and then declines, and grows and declines, because there's crosstalk between these two channels. Okay, now I'm going to erase the board, and we can start over for the situation with respect to the growth and decline of predators. So again, we go back to the basic equations. Prey growth equals the exponential term defined by some growth rate R minus PHP. Remember, little p is a predator efficiency. And dP dt is going to equal, again, the decline rate. Uh, but we have our birth rate, which is fed by predator, which is AP. Same P is right there times HP, the, two, the prey and predator density. Well, remember, A is this conversion factor. We have to eat so many prey to produce a new predator. 
And now let's look at the, these domains related to those domains. So we're in the period of positive predator growth. DP, DT is greater than zero, which means that this term is numerically dominated over that term. So the P starts to grow. If the P is growing here, when the H is growing here, as we just went through, then this term starts to dominate over that term, and then DH, DT starts to go negative, the prey decline. So when the prey decline, you then come back to this equation, you go, oh, wait a minute, H is going down. So there's going to be a point when H is efficiently low, such that the mortality rate dominates the growth rate, and now DP, DT equals negative. When it's negative, we're now back in this regime where P is going down. Uh, and if it gets sufficiently small, then once again, this growth term will dominate over the prey eaten term. This will turn into a positive term. That will start to go up again. This product will start to go up. That will start to become positive, And that defines our differential equation loop. So I hope this makes a little more clearer. Uh, and just to sum up, there's four phases. There's the phase where H grows, P goes down, followed by the phase where H and P both grow, followed by the phase where H goes down and P continues to grow, uh, followed by the phase where H and P both decline. Now, as I said in lecture, and we'll say here again, if you just look at the relation between the H and P's, as we've just gone through to find these two differential equations, that's the behavior, generic behavior. The time scales over which this cycle is governed by, those depend on these parameters of growth rate, predator efficiency, conversion efficiency, and mortality rate. And so we'll see next class when we code the spreadsheet to do this, that small changes in these rate controlling parameters turn out to have very large differences in the respective growth rates, which then drive these very uneven cycles of spikes in the predator density followed by spikes in the prey density, as every ecological study has shown. So I hope things are slightly more clear now. Later.